Hi there and welcome along to another workout for you to row along to. It's day 27 of the 30 days of 30 minute workouts and today we're going to go back to day 21's workout which was one of my favourites of this series. We are going to row at 18, 22, 24, 26, 24, 22 and then 18 strokes a minute for 4 minutes each. A nice pyramid to go up and back down. Now of course because that's only 7 splits Splits, then that's all going to add up to 28 minutes and so we're going to throw in a two minute sprint or fast section at the end we're going to go 28 strokes a minute as fast as we can probably for that one you're going to be looking at run about your 2k pace or 2k plus 5 just try and see what you can get out of it but as for the main pyramid you're going to be starting off at round about 2k plus 20 to 22 pace for those 18 strokes a minute and then as you go up to the 22 strokes a minute, I want you to go round about five seconds faster. So a real jump as you go that four strokes per minute faster. And then three seconds faster for the 24s and another three seconds faster for the 26. And then you slow back down the other side by reducing three seconds, three seconds, five seconds, so that when you get back to the 18 strokes a minute, you are back to the original pace that you started at, okay? Now, like I said, the 18 strokes a minute is 20 to 20 pace so really just put this as how you're feeling today whether you feel you've got the energy in you to really kind of have a good pushed pace workout or whether you want to sit on the back end and just feel yourself kind of nicely go up and down where well, you're not going to push yourself too hard but this is still a mid-tier workout this is still the middle of my intensity pyramid so you are going to be working hard and that last two minutes is really going to kind of kind of set you alight and it's going to be fantastic okay that, that last two minutes from last time around it was amazing the endorphin rush I got at the end of that workout was incredible and I hope that if you've already been through that session then you agree with me okay right so big intro today but hey let's get into our four minute warm-up now we start off by setting up our machine and go up to your drag factor and set that where you want it to be if you don't know about drag factor what it is whereabouts you might want to set it then please do check out the video i have on this channel i set mine to run about 120 125 in case you care <laughs> next up go to your monitor and set it at eye height so you don't have to look up and you don't have to look down and finally set the foot stretchers to a position when you're able to get to the front of the machine with your shins in a nice vertical position okay if they are set too high you might get that little bit bound up and not get there if they're set too low you might go scooting straight past and that causes like hyperextension and power leaks and stuff okay now we're going to do this warm-up at 18 strokes a minute and the power i want you to start at is just to give enough of a push from your feet that you can think about the connection into your hands and then we'll gradually increase the pace up to around about 2k plus 20 after about a minute or so okay right it's very cold today hence the hoodie in fact it's snowing outside so i mean for me, I always complain about the cold anyway, but I think today I'm justified if it's snowing outside. So here we go then, 18 strokes a minute in three, two, one, let's go. So like I say, not too powerful to start. Don't worry too much about your actual pace. I just want you to think about this connection of pushing with the feet and then your hands connecting to the handle to put the force into the flywheel or the water wheel or whatever. And you wanna do that so that your feet push at exactly the same time the hands connect. Because if you push too soon with the feet, then your backside just escapes from you. You don't connect any of that potential power to the machine. Or, if you pull too soon and grab with your arms, you just can't get that snap of the legs into the machine. And you're also on a one-way ticket to tennis elbow. So, get that timing right, pushing with the feet at the point you connect your hands to the machine and increase your pace up to run about 2k plus 20. Now I've been talking about 2k plus terms for the pace and you may not know what that is. So, row a two kilometer time trial, 2000 meters, and divide your resulting time by four. And that will give you the average time across your 2k time trial to cover 500 meters. 
And that's the pace I'm talking about. So your 2K pace is that average of your 2K time. Right, take one stroke, feet on the ground, or one foot on the ground, sorry, continue rowing. Ooh, slightly off balance here. That's better. Still a good solid push with your leg that's strapped in. But this will help with your flexibility as you hinge forwards over your hips and then into that backwards position. <sighs> right, swap feet. And keep on rowing with that other foot. Now I know I flew through the 2k pace info today a little bit quick so do check out the description to this video or any of my videos where I put it in better terms, not quite as quick and hopefully you'll get an understanding of what 2k training pace is Okay, both feet in legs straight and just roll with your back and arms so you continue so you tilt over your hips and then you swing, you open your hips and swing into that backwards lean and once you start that swing that's when you pull in your arms so you don't grab with your arms first you swing over your hips and as you connect with your hips you then follow it by pulling in with your arms right, let's roll to the front of the machine arms straight, forward lean and just press out the front not too powerfully with your legs but I just want you to really get a feel for the hang off the handle that happens when you have this forward lean and straight arms and drive out from the front of the, mach of the machine yeah <laughs> forgot my words then last one I'm like drive out the front of the machine that doesn't sound right but I'm like it does well you're a bit late it's my watch saying to me are you rowing well I've just finished that's the warm up done okay quick drink Oh, that's very cold. Okay, so I'm going to load uh, session or day 27 from ErgZone. There you go, connect, send workout to PM5. Now, I've, if you're using ErgZone, same as me, to program into your monitor, I have set the splits to two minute splits because of that two minute at the end. So you'll end up with like 18, 18, 22, 22, 24, 24, 26, 26, and then back down again. So um, that's only for if you're using ErgZone. You can set it in however you want on your monitor. You can just do this as the 30 minute straight row and just go for it and follow along with me. Or you can set it to the 30 minutes or two minute splits, or you can do what you want to be honest. As long as you're rowing and holding the pace, it doesn't matter. It's only really if you're a data junkie and you want to come back at the end of all of this to see how you got on, all right? So remember what we're going to do is we're going 18, 22, 24, 26. And then we're climbing back down the pyramid again, 24, 22, 18. And then at the end of it, in order to make this a half hour row, we're going to do a two minute, it's run about 28 strokes a minute and putting in lots of pace. And trust me, it's, it's actually a good fun end to this one. It's a great way to finish. Pace wise, you start run about 18 plus 20 to 22. And then as you go up to the 22 strokes per minute, you increase your pace by five seconds. And then as you go up to the 24, you increase by three. And then up to the 26, you increase by another three. And then you go back down the pace again. And like I say, you then got a fast last uh, for those 28 strokes a minute at the end. Okay, right. Let's get into this. It's a great row, this one. And because we're changing every four minutes, it just, this half hour just goes and fast. Once you go to the 26 strokes a minute, the intensity does obviously rise, but that's what makes today's session a mid tier rather than a bottom tier or a top tier. Okay, but I'll talk to you more about this in the main row. No point in me letting you cool down while I talk to you now, is it? Okay, you ready for this? Cool, let's go then. In three, two, one, and we're off. So 18 strokes a minute at 2K plus. 20 to 22. Now, when I do this pace range, I quite often just like to start rowing and see what my body kind of falls into. There are days when I feel a little bit tired and 
my body will naturally just kind of sit down at that plus 21 plus 22 at 18 strokes a minute but then there are other days where or even like today I seem to be rowing at plus 19 let's slow down a bit there we go where I just slide straight into plus 20 and often it's a good idea doing it that way around let your body decide for you rather than holding yourself back with any kind of negative tired thoughts it's kind of rowing sometimes can be as much mental as it is physical when it comes to intensity to be honest I don't, I don't think that's particular to rowing even in the cycling world it's like 10% legs 90% brain sometimes when the intensity gets up and then you look and think crikey I've still got 40 to 40 kilometers to go or something In a weird way, when it comes to cycling it's easier when you're out on the road because you literally have to get home whereas in the world of online racing doing the Zwift thing that I do if, I, if I'm not feeling it I just have to climb off my bike and walk straight back into the house again but then that's why I started rowing and in the first place was to stop cycling outside that would have me out on the road for like three, four hours at a time once the kids came along I'd rather spend more time with them so got a rowing machine can come out onto this and within half an hour give myself just as good a workout as a four hour bike ride and then I was lucky to see the community of Concept 2 rowers and that then opened up my entire world Right, in five strokes time, we are going to do our first increase. This is a big one, five seconds increase, 22 strokes a minute after this stroke. You ready? So a bigger push from the legs will help to give you a faster drive phase and then if you just mirror that drive phase in terms of your arms coming back away from you again so you finish pulling the arms and then send them straight back out again that will help with the rhythm to increase your stroke rate I talk about ratio quite a lot where you want your drive phase to be twice as fast as your recovery and so that means that when you put in more of a push from your legs and you have a dr faster drive phase then your recovery phase needs to increase too 
and like I say you can help that by using your arms away to be the trigger to increase your recovery slightly but you still want your recovery phase to be the longest part of the stroke after all if this was a half hour at 20 strokes a minute then you'd be doing one second drive and two seconds recover which actually means for a half hour row at 20 strokes a minute you're actually only working for 10 minutes of the row the other 20 minutes is spent in the recovery phase and as long as you let that phase be about recovery then you should be able to keep that rate and intensity up there oh. okay so we're into the last minute of the 22s and then we'll go up to 24 oh I think I was a bit previous there hit 23 for a couple of strokes naughty so again just a tiny because this is just a three second jump rather than five you just want to increase your leg push a little bit more force faster drive in two strokes time one more here we go 24 strokes a minute you should just feel the rhythm of your stroke increasing a little bit and you'll hear the tone of your rowing machine increase due to the faster pace intensity wise starts to get up there a little bit now 24 is still a very well for me anyway 24 strokes a minute is a lovely stroke uh, something's happening to my microphone uh, come on oh, I'm sitting on the cable that's what it is sorry uh, uh, and it's a rhythm that for me just everything falls into place for a 2k plus 12 pace which is what I've come down to with the pace increases across this row <coughs> says he as he slips a couple of seconds So, as we get through these faster intervals it does become a bit more important that you get that power into the machine efficiently through that hang off the handle 
actually to be honest even down at 18 if you want to hit the right pace you still want to get that hang off the handle but if you don't feel that the drive or certainly the first half of the leg drive has you feeling like you're hanging off the handle with the force just going in because you're braced against the handle rather than pulling against it with your arms then it's a good idea to start looking at your body positions okay eight strokes to go and then we're up to 26 two more one more here we go just push a little bit harder with your legs and that should give you that pace increase and the faster dry phase but really do think about getting those hands away nice and smooth but fast you want to finish as you pull in the handle at the back of the stroke and then the pace you pull it in at you should send the handle straight back out at again and that will trigger the forward lean as you tilt over your hips into that one o'clock position into the front of the machine but then only when the handle is past your knees and you're in that forward lean do you finally bend your knees to recover to the front of the machine two minutes to go on this one so the intensity for these 26s is certainly up there but it shouldn't feel like anything that you can't complete this is what I call performance endurance this isn't one of the low pace low rate fitness core foundation building paces this is about endurance at increased intensity I still wouldn't say it's necessarily hardship because it's only four minutes but if you were to give it another two or three the intensity 
we'll probably get to a point where you do need to concentrate in order to hold the pace however there's only 15 seconds left and then we slow down to 24 2 1 here we go 24 strokes a minute and 3 seconds slower than you were just rowing the 26s if possible you want to hit the same pace for the 24, 22 and 18 that you did on the way up the pyramid just hang in there and you will feel it get slightly easier as you go through these four minutes and then the 22s will be very welcomed as will the 18s and then the final two minutes at 28 is just you'll have a blast I mentioned the importance of the hang but didn't really explain it or how to do it and the key is to get into the right position at the front of the machine for when you start the stroke and that right position is a forward lean into the front tilting over your hips so that your shoulders are past your hips you want to slide far enough for your shoulders sorry your shins whoops shins to be in a vertical position so make sure to try to get forwards enough because if you don't quite get there or if you go way past vertical you don't quite have the body angle for the hang off the handle then arms straight might help to have a slight outwards rotation of your elbows to lock in your lats and lower your shoulders but the important part is that your arms are straight and relaxed including your shoulders okay five four three two one down to 22s and another three second decrease in pace and so a lighter push with your legs should put in less force into the machine 
and help you slow down the stroke rate too and do notice that I say right from the start that everything is about the amount of push you put from your legs I'm not talking about pulling harder on the handle and that's kind of where this idea of the hang comes in that when you start the stroke with that forward lean shins vertical arms straight and push your feet into the machine you hold that forward lean and straight arms to let the power surge up through your body up through your back through your arms into your hands which are just hooked over the handle and so all you're doing is bracing your hands against the handle and the way the flywheel or water wheel works it turns because of that force and then you go backwards as a result but think about pushing the machine away from you rather than thinking about sending yourself backwards and that will help you kind of lock in that forward lean and straight arms to get that hang off the handle and what happens with the arms is that the more power you put in from your legs the more you are braced against the handle for that hang and so that braced power when you come in to a finish at the end because your attention's up there more power means a more powerful finish with the arms you don't really need to think about the arms adding in power two strokes one more down to 18s and five seconds slower so this one takes you right back down again a chance to just have an active recovery you won't recover much but because the intensity has dropped by the time you get to the end of these of this last four minutes and you're ready to go into that last hard two minutes then you will have the energy and power to give even if you are feeling fatigued right now that two minutes at the end is still there I said before about there's always room for dessert which means there's always room for a sprint at the end 
I remember when I won silver at the British Indoor Champs I was 500 meters to go in third place and feeling very sorry for myself tired lackluster and just kept telling myself it wasn't my day but then I heard the announcer say something along the lines of there's no way Stevenson can catch the Spaniard in second place he'll have to settle for third <coughs> and my friend Luis was cruising along in second there's 500 meters to go and I just went okay time for dessert and surprised myself by how much energy how much power how much fitness I actually still had in me that I was just talking myself out of and so although I already said I won silver so I spoiled the outcome of this story but I picked myself up went hard for that last 500 meters flew past Luis and took silver there's a guy called Timothy Mayle who won gold who is streets ahead of the rest of the field that day so all of us were racing for silver right so time for dessert in three strokes time two one here we go then 28 so really get that power from your legs into the machine push hard with the legs hang off the handle have a powerful finish with the handle and then send it straight back out again in the same pace you brought it in at I'm sitting at 2k pace remember get those elbows through your sides wrists flat let your arms naturally rebound after the pull in don't be tempted to over lean at the front in search for more length just keep one o'clock one o'clock eleven one eleven here we go big finish keep your rate and push harder with the legs two more one more good job how did I I'm interested in that last 145.2 for that last one which is 0.2 slower than 2k pace but I'll accept that uh, that really is 
such a good session. It's worthwhile bookmarking that one and coming back to it anytime you feel like you're unsure what you want to do because it takes you through pretty much all of the pace intensities that we do. You start off at that 18, which is the bottom intensity, lower tier on my pyramid. And then you slowly work your way up into mid. Maybe those 26s are the top end of mid. I don't really think they get anywhere near top. But then you work your way back down to the bottom of that pyramid again, intensity pyramid. But then at the end for the two minutes, because you're trying to hit 2K pace at what's probably going to be a slower stroke rate, that intensity really does get up there to, to the, by maybe the last 30 seconds, 45 seconds, you should be within that kind of top intensity where you're really feeling in order to hit your 2K pace, you're having to put in max intensity. And that's what it's all about. So I teach you to the top, gives you that little bit of a zing of speed, but it doesn't destroy you. That's what still keeps this overall, when you look at it as an overview, as a mid-tier workout, mid-intensity, but it does give you the bottom, mid and top. It's just such a great session. Why am I selling you on it at the end? <laughs> Should have been doing this first. Anyway, have you had a drink? Are we good for a cool down? Good. Here we go then. So 18 strokes a minute. Let's do this at 2K plus 20. So basically that 18 strokes a minute we were just doing at. We'll start off at that and then by 30 seconds in, we'll start to slow down the pace. So here we go then. In three, two, one, go. <laughs> My watch even gave me a little celebratory bing. What's it saying? My move ring is closed. Woo! <laughs> I know it's just a ding off a watch, but there is still something nice about closing all three rings on an Apple watch. Stood for 12 hours a day, burnt at least 600 calories, exercised for at least 30 minutes. To be fair, most days, my calorie burn is closer to 1500, so unless I've had a rest day, it's very easy to close the activity and calorie rings for me. But it's all about motivation. It's all about what keeps you coming back onto the machine. Be it that you can see improvements either in pace or you can see your body changing there's definitely something to be said for vanity when you see muscles growing and fat going you're like oh this is working i'm gonna carry on but then when you see your performance increase as well or you do a session a week after doing it before and you suddenly find it easier you're like hey man i'm getting fitter and also hopefully i'm part of that for you hopefully you look forward to coming back and doing these videos with me i help keep you motivated to come back for another day oh, i'm done with the cool down you do not have to stop cooling down you can continue or climb off and do some stretching I recommend hamstrings quads hip flexors shoulders biceps forearms and that kind of praying so you go whoosh that gets under there um, and some supine twists once these uh, 30 days are over I will show you I'll make a video showing you what I do as my stretches uh, but I have very, very little time for extracurricular videos right now because I'm making one of these every day and then I'm doing the form check Fridays on Fridays as well uh, so, which today is Saturday, so the third episode of Form Check Fridays is online right now if you haven't already spotted, um, with a fancy new thumbnail, um, yeah, so I do wonder, yeah, whether it, that matters at all, the thumbnails thing, I do, uh, look at a lot of this stuff as to, not in a kind of, low, oh, my numbers are low, but I sometimes look and say, is it just the reason that people that the other the big names get all like hundreds of thousands of views is 
just because they've been out there for longer and they really just do promote themselves. And I don't. I just make them, I upload them, I chuck them onto Facebook, post on Twitter and whatever. Hey, I've done another video, but I... Pfft. So, um, I do wonder whether the thumbnail thing even matters. Is anyone going to stumble upon my stuff? Yeah. But it doesn't matter because the fact is that because there's this core of people that watch these videos and keep on coming back, then I've got, I mean, there's got to say there's a good kind of 40 or 50 people that just keep on coming back and commenting on like Scarlett and Charlie and uh, Phil and Paul and um, Pockwreck, which I don't know if that's actually your real name or if that's your YouTube thing. But yeah, and, and then there's Stephanie and there's, um, oh, there's Kim, there's, oh, Craig, Craig, I'm forgetting what there's Karen, there's just loads of people. I'm not gonna, I can't, obviously I'm not gonna name everyone's, everyone's name, but there's loads of people that I should probably remember because I'm always replying to the comments because we actually have this kind of relationship thing now where you're kind of posting and I'm helping you come along. Whereas if there was 100,000 people viewing every video and leaving like 2,000 comments at a time, there's no way I could do that. I mean, I'd spend, basically I'd spend about an hour, an hour and a half every night replying to comments. Um, right now because especially because right of winter more people have been watching so there's more comments so I spend an hour and a half every single night replying to comments if I suddenly had 100,000 views then woof so if you want um, if you want to put an end to me <laughs> then I work out a way to get uh, my viewing numbers up to 100,000 and all those comments and then I'll be like I'm done now <laughs> just it's too much can't, can't keep up with all the comments or I'll have to like, hire someone to do it but I don't want to do that either it's nothing worse I mean there's nothing worse than when you pay someone money for like a coaching course or something. You go to someone and say, right, I like you. I want you to coach me. And then you pay them it. And then they say, oh, here's Phil. Here's my number two. He's just as good as me. And you're like, I didn't pay for Phil. I paid for you. Anyway, that's a made up name, by the way. There's no, yeah. Anyway, right. Sorry. I'm going to, I tried, told myself I was going to not have one of my elongated rants today. So I'm not going to. Um, so I hope you enjoyed today's mid-tier workout. Now, tomorrow, uh, Sunday, nine o'clock in the morning UK time, that's the 28th, is that right? Yeah, 28th of November 2021, just because obviously you might be watching this in July 2024, um, there is going to be a live row on Erg Race, run by Fitness Matters, who do it every Sunday morning at that time, whether I'm doing it or not, they still do a nine o'clock in the morning Erg Race row, so just take a look for it, um, and that's going to be streamed live to YouTube, and then I'll then re-edit it again for like day 28 proper of of this thing and then what I'm going to do tomorrow just as a little sneak peek I'm going to do another mid-tier I know bonkers I'm going against my own advice I'm going to do another mid-tier and I'm going to do the 15 10 5 which is day 17 is that right um yeah the kind of top tier maximum one where uh you start 15 minutes at, was it 15 at 18 strokes a minute and then 10 at 24 strokes a minute and then five at 28 strokes a minute and it's a real tough workout but oh good grief it's, it's the, it, that and today's session are the two top ones for out these 30 days that i just love to bits so that's what i'm gonna do uh so, uh, assuming that I wake up and I've got enough energy to do it. That's the plan tomorrow. So, but it's a freestyle day, so you can do it however you want to do it. So day 20, the, these days like 7, 14, 21, 28 are freestyle days where if you just want to do a 30 minute time trial or a 30 minute at 20 strokes per minute, 2K plus 18 pace, or you want to follow me, it's entirely up to you. Um, so that's the, the, the point in this one, okay? And then after that, we've only got two more days and then we're all done. Wow. So, right. So thank you very much for coming along and doing day 27. I really appreciate you being on the other side of the camera for this. And I will see you in whatever next video pops up. The last thing really just to say is the hashtag for today, which I know we've already done the dessert thing. Um, so I can't really do that again, or can I? Uh, let's just say, just this time, just room for dessert, okay? Just to have the full thing, room for dessert. So if you only leave a hashtag just saying you got this far through the video, well done, then yeah, room for dessert. And I'll go wash the sweat out my eyes. So thank you very much once again. Please look after yourselves. Have a great weekend if you're doing this at a weekend or have a great week if you're doing it on a weekday. And I will see you in another video. Stay safe, be well. Bye-bye.